Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're creating a login slash authentication app using Python Django in the backend and React.js in the frontend. This is not the first video in this series, in fact we've already done 13 before in which we've covered the complete process for logging in, password resets, adding tokens to authentication headers and all those kind of things. In this video we're going to continue and we're going to be focusing on password validation. In our current application, people are able to register themselves on our app. And if we go to that page, they have a nice user registration form with an email, a password field and a confirmed password field. However, currently any input is welcome in our email and our password field and our confirmed password field is not even being used. So in this video, we're going to make sure that all of these three forms have the right validation rules so that users cannot just enter any information inside of our app. And to do that, we're going to be following five main steps. We're going to start by installing Yup, because that is the library we'll be using for password validation. Next, we're going to add some required imports in our register.jsx file, and we're going to define our schema and validation rules so that users are limited in the input that they can provide. Then we're going to make sure that our schema validation is passed to our actual form so that the validation is actually enforced. And as a last step, we're going to test if everything works the way that we expect. During this tutorial, we have been using React Hook Form. And React Hook Form has its own documentation on how we can do form validation uh, in accordance with this React Hook Form. So on the documentation, we're going to click on Get Started. And then on the left hand side, we can look for schema validation. And in there you see the steps that we need to take and immediately you can also see that it uses yup for the validation and to get this started we need to install two packages we need to install hook form slash resolvers and also yup so we can start our validation journey so i'm going to copy over these commands right here and we're going to go to our code and quickly stop our front end server and then install those packages inside of the front end folder in our project so let's give that some time. And we have now installed the packages and I see in my terminal that we have two moderate severity vulnerabilities and we're going to try to fix those by doing npm audit fix. So let's do npm audit fix in our terminal and hopefully that will make sure that those vulnerabilities disappear. And you can see that there are no vulnerabilities anymore. So that problem seems to be solved. We're going to be making the changes today in our register.jsx file. And inside of this file, we're going to be starting with some imports. The first thing that we need to import is the yup resolver. And that is from at hookform slash resolvers and then slash yup. And the yup resolver is going to make sure that our schema that we define with yup can be passed to React hook form. Now, of course, we also need to import yup. And to do that, we do import and then a star as yup from yup. And this makes sure that we can use yup and define our schema inside of our application. So the next step that we need to take is actually define the rules that we want inside of our application. And we can define those rules in a new constant. So underneath this handle submit constant, I'm going to create a new constant and I'm going to be calling that schema because we want to define the schema validation for our app. Then we're going to say that this is going to be equal to yup. And then underneath we define dot object. And in there we start with some round brackets and after that some squirrely brackets. And now for each of the forms that we have inside of this page, we can provide some rules. Now, if we scroll down, you can see that this is very basic. We have an email field, we have a password field, and we then have a password to field, which confirms whether the passwords are actually the same. So the first rules that we can uh, write down are for the email. Uh, so what we do here is we simply write email because that is the name of the actual uh, form right here. And after this, we can put in all of the rules. And we always start this with yup. And the first thing that we want to check is whether the email address that has been provided is actually a string. So we're going to do string because that is what we are going to be expecting. And what we can also do is dot email. And the dot email is going to check whether the input uh, resembles an email address. And yup has some logic to determine whether that is the case. 
Now, inside of this email round brackets right here, we can provide a text. And that is the text that is going to be shown to the user uh, if email has not been defined correctly. So in here, we can say field expects an email address. And when we now put in some validation that does not look like an email address, it will provide this message to the user. What we can also put in here is a dot required statement um, because this email field is required. Otherwise, a user should not be able to register. Uh, and the same goes in there. We can provide some text for the user. And we can say email is a required field. And just like that, we're going to be testing whether email is an actual string, whether it resembles an email address, and whether it is actually provided in general. Now we can do the same thing for our password field because we don't want people to just submit anything. So we're going to do a comma at the end. And then the next thing we will define is for password. And again, that is because the name that we have defined right here is also equal to password. Now, same thing as before, we are firstly going to check if it is yup.string. And then afterwards, we will have a bunch of things we want to check. And I'm just going to put it on a new line to make it a little bit more readable. Um, this password is going to be a required field to put in. And we can also put in the text password is a required field. And what I also want the users to do is have a minimum amount of characters inside of their password because I don't want to get passwords who are like two or three characters long. So to realize that we can do dot min. And in here, we can first start by defining the number of characters that we need to put in. And then we can also put in a message again for when something goes wrong. So in this instance, I'm going to say that a password needs to be at least eight characters long. And if that is not the case, we can put in the text password must be at least eight characters. And this will make sure that the user is not putting in anything less than eight. Now, what you typically see on all of the different websites is that there's also requirements for using capitals, for using uh, lowercase letters, but also for using numbers. And that is exactly what we're going to be entering for our requirements here as well. And we can do that by using dot matches. And we're first going to check whether a user has used a capital inside of their password. And we do that by doing a slash and then some square brackets like this. And in the square brackets, we define a and then a hyphen and then z. And then we end with a slash again. And then after the comma, we can put in the text password must contain at least one uppercase letter. And what this expression does right here, it basically checks if a capital letter between A and Z is present. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to copy this over. But now we're also going to do it for the lowercase letters. And the only thing we need to change is make sure that the A is lowercase and that the Z is lowercase. And now we can change the text in saying password must contain at least one lower case letter like this. Now we can actually copy it over again because we're going to be doing exactly the same thing, but now for numbers. Uh, and we can do that by changing the A to a zero and the Z to a nine. And then change the text to password must contain at least one number. And this expression is going to check if any of the numbers between zero and nine are present. Now, we also want to make sure that they use a special character uh, to make the password even stronger. And that is going to be a little bit of a different configuration. So again, we do dot matches because in essence, that works the same. Uh, however, there's not really a range for special characters. It's not like uh, going from A to Z or from zero to nine. So in here, we actually need to specify all of the special characters uh, that we can think of. So again, we start with a slash and another slash, and in between we will put some square brackets. And in here, I am just going to define the special characters. So from the top of my keyboard, I'm just going to put in everything that I will see. We have an exclamation mark, an at sign, a hashtag, a dollar sign, percentage sign. We have this strange looking thing, and then sign a star, round brackets, that can of course also be special characters, 
and also and then the, all the other things we have is a comma a dot a question mark an apostrophe we can of course also have a colon a semicolon an array sign we also have like a slash but standing up and then we have these two things right there and this should cover about all of the special characters uh, that you can think of but maybe you have even more and you can just put them in right here so for example what i forgot was a plus sign as well so there's also something we can uh, we can put in there now you can follow along but you can also just go to my github and copy over the string and make sure that you have everything that you need now similar as before we can also add some text uh, i'm just going to copy it over from the previous row and in there we can define password must contain at least one special character and just like this we have uh, entered a whole bunch of requirements that the user needs to be thinking about when creating a password now uh, what we also want to do is make sure that our field password Two is actually the same as our field for password because we kind of want to check whether the user still knows what they've entered. So after this whole block for password, I'm going to put in a comma and then define a rule for password two. And in here we again specify yup dot string because that is going to be still the same. I'm also going to do dot required because we want this field to be required and then we can specify password confirmation is a required field. And then on the next line, we're going to bring in some logic that's going to validate whether the input for password two is the same as for password one. And to do that, we can specify dot one of, and then we put in some round brackets and then some square brackets. And what we're going to be putting inside of these square brackets is yup.ref. And then we type in password like this. And then we do a comma and then we do no. And then after this, we can do a comma again. And now we can specify the text that we want to present to the user if uh, the passwords do not match. And in that case, we do passwords must match. Now, what does this actually do? Well, this one-off is going to check whether this one is the same as this one. Now, in the first part of one-off, we're going to be uh, putting in the value that needs to be compared to password2. And in here, we use yup.ref, which can reference a field that we've put in earlier. So in this case, we reference the value that is being passed in of password, um, and then we can use that to compare it to password2. Now, if that is not the case, then we display the text for passwords must match. And that was actually the last validation rule that we wanted to enter right here, because now for all of the free forms that we have, we have validation rules set up. So what we need to do next is make sure that these rules are actually being applied on our form, because right now we have just defined a schema, but we still need to make sure that they're actually being checked. So what we're going to do, we're going to scroll down a little bit in our code until we find the place where our form gets populated. And actually that is above right here. So I'm just going to take this use form part and bring it down under the constant of the schema. And now inside of this part for use form, we're going to do some squarely brackets like this. And then we can pass in our schema inside of our use form. And we're going to be doing that with something called yupresolver. So we need to say that resolver is going to be equal to yupresolver. And inside of this yupresolver, we can simply put our schema. And this is going to make sure that the yupresolver uh, takes our schema and actually puts it in the resolver of use form. And like that, it will be enforced when we submit our forms. So let's save what we have done so far. And let's start our front end by doing npm run dev so that we can see these rules in action. And we are now inside of our browser. And we, of course, made the changes to our register page. So let's go there. And now we can check if those rules actually work. So the first one that I'm going to check is email. So right now, if I just put in AAAA, uh, just like these four characters, it should recognize that this is not an email address. So let's see if we get any errors when we try to put this in. 
And you can now see that for our email, we get the error of field expects an email address. For password and for confirm password, we see that we uh, need to put an input because it is a required field. And now if I do aaa at email.com, it will most likely uh, see this as an email address. And when we click on register, this field is now okay, but the other ones are not. So for our password, let's first make sure that we can just see what we're typing. If I put in AAAA, the password is required uh, error gets away. But now we see that our password must be at least eight characters. So if I put in four more A's, you can see that we're now fulfilling that requirement, uh, but we must have at least one uppercase letter. So let's make the first A uppercase. And now you can see that it goes to the next rule and states that we also need a number. So I'm going to put in a number. And now we get the next error that states that we must have at least one special character. So this enforces the user to be a little bit more creative with their passwords. Now our password to field should validate whether the entry is actually the same as in this field. So if I now put in something right there, you can see that our passwords are currently not matching and that this is going to stop us from submitting the form. So if we now go all the way and replicate the password, you can see that now it has passed all of the rules uh, and that we can now successfully submit this user. And if we do that, it should register it in our backend, send us to the login page. Now, of course, in this code, I have only uh, put in the validation rules that I think are useful and that are nice to show, uh, but you can extend this exactly to what you want. You can make it as crazy and as painful for the user <laughs> as you would uh, like. And that is actually all that we're going to be discussing today. In this video, I showed you how you can enable password validation inside of your React.js frontend. In our next and actual final video, we're going to be entering some messaging on our React.js frontend so that the user knows a little bit more uh, about making good or bad requests. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.